Good morning and welcome back to Hope is Coming, an Advent devotional series. It's day 23 and we've been journeying through the Old Testament and now the New Testament to discover what it means to be in this season of Advent. Advent is a time of preparation for the arrival of someone important. That someone for the nation of Israel was a savior, a Messiah, that someone turned out to be Jesus. And we too look to the future coming of Jesus with hope for his second return. This morning, we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 2 to discover the story of his birth. I'm Michael Gilmore, and our mission at Northgate is to love God, love people, and teach others to do the same. I've already read this passage for our church twice so far, and I'll read it again on Christmas Eve, but I want us to dive into it together this morning. So turn with me to Luke chapter 2. As we read about the birth of Jesus, just listen and pay attention. Maybe you've heard the story a thousand times. Maybe you'll hear it in the voice of Linus from Peanuts, but just focus and listen and try to imagine what this story would look like if it was a movie or if you saw it in person. Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1, this is the word of God. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that the census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. You will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom he, God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, The shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angels had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Throughout the entire Old Testament, the Jews were expecting a a conquering king to one day set them free, to save them. And yet God chose for Jesus to come as a baby. And he was born to a poor teenaged girl. What was his first outfit? Rugs. Who were his first visitors? Stinky shepherds. How would he save us? Not by victory with a sword, but by dying a criminal's death on the cross. Jesus is worthy of all our praise, all the glory, all the honor, 
yet our God is humble. How does God's humility move your heart to worship him today? As we think about this passage, God could have delivered Jesus to us in any manner of of ways, but he chose this story, this family, this young girl, this young man who is married to her, who will be married to her. Jesus came to earth as a child to experience everything that we experienced and live this perfect life so that he could be that perfect sacrifice to take our place. Romans tells us, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, the word Jesus became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. That's from the message translation and it's this beautiful picture that he became a part of our lives, of our world. How comforting is it to know that our God humbly moved in next door. He got to experience everything that we do and we do not worship a God who is distant and angry uh, Santa. We celebrate our Savior as who he is, Emmanuel, God with us. That is the hope that we get to embrace this season at this time. That God is imminent. He is personal. He is our friend. He is with us in the thick and the thin and the good and the bad and the sick and the healthy and the rich and the poor. Jesus is walking with us all along. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. God, thank you for coming near to me by sending Jesus. Thank you for modeling your humility in the nativity story and giving me hope. Not just at Christmas, but all year round and for eternity. Amen. Our hope is in Jesus, and we can have confidence in that hope because Jesus didn't come bearing that sword, conquering the world in the name of God. He came with an open arm, open arms to embrace us, to forgive us, not with anger or or wrath, but he came with love and forgiveness. So here's my point of application for you today. Application challenge. Read the Christmas story again. And think about, first, what Jesus is leaving, the heavens. And you saw, uh, we see a glimpse of it with the angels and the multitude of hosts. Imagine what he's leaving and what he's entering into. Imagine the humility it took Jesus to experience this, to come down, and the love that it took for him to obey God the Father and do this on our behalf, that we might have relationship with him. And if you're feeling really spicy, read Philippians, the whole book, or at least chapter 4. Consider what that is saying about Jesus' humility there. A little bit different of a challenge for you today, but we are just a few days away from Christmas and all the celebration and cookies and Christmas hams that come with it. So thank you for journeying with me. I hope that you are finding your hope in Jesus. I hope that this series is reminding you to focus only on him. There are so many distractions in this world that can pull us away from staying focused on Jesus and having our hope in him. Don't fall into those traps. Stay focused, stay loving, Stay pursuing Jesus in all ways. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow morning.